Logit equations for Lenten class model probabilities. In Lenten class analysis, the, the model probabilities are typically modeled using a multinomial logistic regression parameterization. In Lenten gold, you see these logit parameters appearing in the parameters output. In this video, I will exp ex explain why we use this parameterization. Moreover, I will show how logit parameters are related to the probabilities appearing in profile. And moreover, I will discuss interpretation of these parameters, at, uh, which as you will see depends on the coding that you use. Why do, do we use this logit parameterization? Well, we are using maximum likelihood estimation to obtain the parameters of a latent class model. In maximum, maximum likelihood estimation is much easier if you don't need to, impose, need to impose range constraints on the parameters that you're estimating. Logit parameters can take on values between minus and plus infinity, so there is no range constraint involved, while, uh, while probabilities are restricted to stay within a uh, zero one range. Uh, so estimating probability with maximum likelihood is more complicated than estimating logic parameters. And this is the reason that we use this parameterization. Moreover, moreover inf inference, let's say computing Z test, well test for parameters, is much easier and more reliable if you work with unbounded parameters. Uh, so this is another reason for using the logit instead of the probabilities. Moreover, uh, the logit parameterization allows all kinds of interesting extensions of the basic model that we have been discussing so far, uh, such as models with local dependencies, models for ordinal indicators, models for multiple latent variables, and mixture regression and mixture grow models. These are topics that I will discuss in later videos. Let us look at the form of a logit equation for the response probabilities, uh, for the probability of, of giving a certain response condition on the class membership. As you can see, uh, the, the equation contains terms alpha and beta. The, the, the alpha and beta is summed, exponentiated, and exponentiating is simply raising the number e to the power that you see here. And the alphas are intercept terms, and as you can see, they uh, vary across items, and so every indicator has its own intercept terms, and they vary across categories of the indicators. The betas are slopes and they could, let's say, indicate how strongly the latent classes are related to the indicators. And so you have a different slope parameter for every combination of category of the indicator and latent class. In, this, in the, uh, the denominator of this equation, you see actually the same uh, term appearing again, so an alpha plus a beta term, but you sum now over all the categories of the uh, indicator concerns. Uh, so that we denote now a category with, with M, and we sum over uh, from the first category to the uppercase MJ, which is a number of categories. And uh, so the same term actually enters again in the denominator, but now summed over all the categories. Also, for the, also the class proportions are typically uh, parameterized in terms of logit equations, and uh, the, the, the probability of being latent class. It's modeled as a function of the gamma parameters, uh, which in this case are, let's say, uh, and here we have only intercept terms. Uh, the gamma parameters are unbounded, and this transformation of the gamma parameters yields the, model, the, the class proportion. So the exponentiating the gamma parameter, doing that for all latent classes, and then summing over latent classes. Uh, so we use here the C, C prime to distinguish it from this C, summing over all latent classes. Uh, and then dividing by the sum yields the uh, probability of being in a certain latent class. Well, this is the simplest uh, model for the latent classes. Uh, in more extended models, for, you may include covariates. Yeah? So this equation uh, uh, will not have only gamma uh, zero, but also gamma one and gamma two, etc. for covariates, and then uh, covariates affecting the classes. And it's also possible to include other latent variables in this equation at the moment that you want to, let's say, predict one latent variable by another latent variable. Yeah, so this is a bit looking uh, ahead to, let's say, more expanded topics that we dis will discuss in later videos. But let's go, uh, let's say, more into the detail in detail in, the, uh, in, in these equations using a numerical example. And for this purpose, I will use uh, the GSS example and uh, estimate this free class model, again, with this uh, GSS82 uh, example. Uh, 
I start letting go again. I open the GFS82 dataset. And I will specify a sweet class model. Well, the logic parameters or the logistic regression parameters I'm uh, referring to can be found in the parameters output. So basically you have uh, three blocks of parameters and the parameters that you see here, and models for indicators, the first part. So these are the, the betas that we saw in the equations. These are the intercept terms for the indicators, and the alphas, and here you see uh, the gammas corresponding to the cluster uh, proportions. So let's say looking at the parameters, for example, for, for uh, accuracy, you see that uh, we have six uh, uh, parameters. Let's say for every combination of cluster and every combination, let's say for every cluster and every category of the indicator, we have a separate parameter. So what you cannot, uh, and the interpretation uh, is not that easy for in, in this case uh, because we are using what's called effects coding. And so you will, uh, what you see is that the parameters sum to zero uh, within rows and they sum to zero within uh, columns. Yeah, that's called what you call effects coding. Let's say, but the way you can interpret these parameters are as follows. If, if you have a positive value, it means that it, the, the combination concerns is more likely to occur than average. And uh, if you see a negative value, then you see that the combination is more it's less likely to occur than average. Yeah? So, for example, you can see that cluster number one and two are more likely to give the mostly true answer on accuracy, and cluster number three is less likely to give this answer and more likely to give the not true answer. Well, this is the kind of same the same kind of conclusion that we uh, obtained uh, from looking at the profile. What I will do now is I will change the coding of the of the uh, of the parameters. Uh, Instead of using effects coding, uh, where the parameters sum to zero within categories of an indicator and sum to zero within uh, latent classes, I will use uh, dummy coding. Uh, you can change the coding uh, by changing the output. Uh, so you go to the output tab, and here you see uh, an option uh, for the coding, and I will use the dummy first coding. And re estimate the model. So what you see now is that the output looks quite different. So we see many zeros appearing in output, and that's because of the dummy coding. The dummy coding first means that the parameters for the first category are now equal to zero. They are fixed to zero for identification. And so um, the same appears here. Also the, the intercept for the first category is equal to zero, and also for the clusters, the first gamma is set to, set to zero. What I will show you now is, let's say, how to obtain the profile output. So, uh, let's say, uh, what's the link, let's say, between the profile outputs and, and the parameters. You have seen the, uh, the equation, let's say, but we are going to uh, fill, uh, fill in now the, the parameters and see what the equations uh, do, uh, what they're what they supposed to do. And for this purpose, I will open uh, a, sp a spreadsheet that I created. As you will see in this, what I did in this spreadsheet is that I uh, copy uh, the, the beta coefficients associated with, with, uh, with uh, accuracy, and I copied the alpha coefficients, which are associated with accuracy. In addition, I uh, took the profile uh, for uh, accuracy. And this is what you, what you see here. So this is the profile for accuracy. So this, this information is obtained from the program. 
And let's, now let's go to this to the spreadsheet and show, let's say, how using the parameters, using the, the logistic parameters, you can obtain the probabilities. Well, the first uh, thing that you have to do is to add up the intercept and the slope. And so what you see here, what I do here is that I take the um, the intercept uh, for the first category of accuracy, for the mostly true uh, uh, category, and I add the slope corresponding uh, to the cluster uh, mostly uh, cluster one mostly true combination. Well, this is done for every uh, of the combinations, and uh, as you can see, the trick I use is that I uh, fix uh, the B uh, uh, index here, and then I can just copy uh, this equation, uh, let's say, to the other cells here. The next step is this exponentiating. Okay, so the term that we obtain here, the linear term, the alpha plus beta for every uh, cluster uh, accuracy combination is now exponentiated, which in Excel is done with the exp uh, function. Well, this is done for every combination, okay, so over here, etc. And then we also we need to sum, because we recall that in the, um, in the equation that we saw, we saw an exponentiated linear term in the uh, numerator, but in the denominator, we saw the sum, uh, let's say, over all categories of the indicator. And so here we see the sum of these two uh, exponentiated linear terms. And the same is done here uh, for the second cluster, and here is done for the, uh, for, uh, for the third cluster. And finally, the only thing that, we, that remains to be done is uh, taking the exponentiated term corresponding to a certain cluster uh, accuracy combination and dividing by the sum. And that's what I do here. And as you can see, if I divide the exponentiated terms by the sum of the exponentiated uh, uh, terms, I get exactly the same as the profile output. And so this demonstrates exactly that uh, demonstrates that uh, from the parameters you can obtain uh, the profile output. What I will do now is uh, so that it doesn't matter what kind of coding you use, yeah, whether you use effects coding or dummy coding, uh, this uh, uh, e equation, let's say, uh, linking parameters to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, profile uh, uh, probabilities uh, applies irrespective of the coding. And so what I will do now, I will uh, take now the parameters uh, obtained with, with uh, dummy coding. So I'm going to copy this here. Yeah, but I also have, of course, and take also the intercept corresponding to the dummy coding. So the dummy coding coded uh, intercept terms are these. Yeah. And as you will see, well, the computations uh, are to, uh, updated by Excel. That's, that's a nice thing of Excel. As yeah, so you can see that uh, again, I reproduce the, uh, the probabilities reported in profile. Well, on my transparencies, I have, uh, let's say, yeah, uh, uh, put, let's say, shown, let's say, uh, uh, shown the, the, that the, had the two types of parameters outputs, uh, so the, that you also have it available there. And I also, uh, let's say, illustrate uh, the uh, profile computation uh, for uh, one latent class uh, and one uh, category of the accuracy uh, variable. And so that's one of the, uh, the probabilities uh, that we were computing uh, with, uh, with Excel file. And you can see that, let's see how it works. So here we have intercept term uh, plus a slope uh, for accuracy equal to one. Well, it appears here again because we are going to sum now over all categories of, of accuracy. You have the same uh, uh, terms, but now for uh, category two of accuracy, and that yields uh, a probability 0.6453. Uh, uh, well, if you use the, the dummy coding, uh, then the, the equation looks like this. Uh, for the first category, the intercept and the slope are equal to zero. It appears here again, and those are the intercept and slope parameter for the second category. And again, you get the same, uh, the same probability. Now, there's one final thing I would like to uh, explain about these uh, uh, logic parameters. 
and that's uh, actually the reverse relation. And let's say what's the link with the lo uh, between the logic parameters and the probabilities. Uh, so how do you obtain the logic parameters actually from the probabilities, or how should you then let's say uh, interpret uh, the logic parameters in terms of probabilities? Um, if you're using effects coding, that, that's a bit more complicated, but I will illustrate this for dummy coding, which is actually the more uh, standard way of coding uh, uh, logic parameters. So uh, what I did here is that I copied the profile output, uh, but now not for accuracy, but for purpose. And so this is the profile output that you obtain in gold for, uh, for purpose. And these are the parameters that you obtain for purpose, the beta parameters. Yeah? So, uh, now the question is, uh, well, how do we obtain these beta parameters from uh, from the profile? So we effectively we go the other way around. Well, the first step is that you have to transform the probabilities to what we call uh, odds. And odds is a probability divided by another probability. In this case, we use the uh, we compute the odds with the first category as a reference category. So we divide the probability of given the second response uh, by the probability of given the first response. So you can see this, that's what I do here. Yeah. I, I also compute the odds for uh, waste of time instead of good purpose. Well, this is done for all latent classes. So this, these six numbers represent uh, the probability of the depends uh, or weight, depending on which uh, uh, row you look at, divided by the probability of selecting good purpose. The next step is uh, taking the log of, this, uh, of these odds. Right? And, we transform the odds to log odds. And that's done here. So we use the natural logarithm transformation and to go to the, uh, uh, let's say, to the log odds scale. And then finally, uh, how do we then get to the parameters that we uh, obtain the parameters outputs? And we uh, compare the log odds for cluster number one uh, with the log odds of cluster number two, uh, because the cluster number one is the reference cluster. So we compare this more this with this, and the same is done. Uh, we compare this with this. So the same is done for the for, uh, for the other uh, log odds, and, is, and the same is done for cluster three uh, compared to cluster number one. And so this is differences between log odds. And so the parameters uh, reported uh, in the parameters outputs, if you use dummy coding, are differences between log odds or log odds ratios and those are the typical parameters that you obtain in logistic regression analysis also. So if you exponentiate the, these parameters then you get uh, odds ratios. So now this, this concludes let's say the, the uh, explanation of, uh, of, of the parameters. I have a few final remarks that I would like to share with you. One re uh, important remark is that in simple latent class applications, you don't need to worry about logic parameters. And so you can just look at the profile. And so most users of latent class analysis will simply look at the profile and don't worry that much about the logic parameters. However, for extensions of the basic model, we need the logistic parameterization. And we have shown, let's say, that the, out the profile output is directly linked to the logic parameters. So actually it contains the same kind of information, but now in terms of probabilities. We also saw that under effects coding, the parameters <coughs> indicated by the particular indicator cluster combinations are more likely if you have a positive sign or less likely than average if you have a negative sign. Under dummy coding, the parameters are log odds ratios. These can be exponentiated to obtain odds ratios. This concludes my discussion of the logic parameterization of the probabilities in latent class models.